Okay, everybody, welcome. It's one o'clock and you know me, I like to get these started right on time. Welcome to another uh, live from the Not So Shed uh, with the blizzard, I'm here in the home office. But uh, really excited today because I've got Richard Clapper from Design Plan with us. Um, and we're gonna have a lot of fun talking about steam rooms. But first, uh, one piece of industry news, uh, Inside Lighting is up with a great piece on nine decision points on UV disinfection. So UV lighting is, um, is a hot topic right now with COVID-19. Uh, and this article goes through nine things to discuss as far as where things should be installed, where things should be, uh, you know, should be, would be focused on air disinfection or surface disinfection, architectural fixtures versus temporary units. It's a great piece. We'll link to it in the show notes. It's really worthwhile for anybody working in the lighting industry who's being asked um, about UV disinfection for public spaces. Uh, but today, I have the one and only Richard Clapper of Design Plan with us to talk about steam rooms and saunas. Um, it's the tricky place to light. Um, anybody that's worked in hospitality before knows that, uh, but Design Plan has a series of downlights that are specifically designed for this application. And uh, Rich is gonna take us through what's new. Thank you, JP. Thank you. Uh, can I share my screen? Do you have to allow me? I will set that for you. You should be able to right now. There you go. So we're gonna talk about steam room and saunas. And if you go to our website and you go to the indoor catalog, along the left-hand side, you'll see an alphabetical list of all of the different sections. If you go down to steam rooms and saunas, you'll see the products that we offer. Now, what's important to understand is that ETL tests fixtures for steam rooms and saunas based on the room, not the fixture, the room ambient temperature. Steam rooms are tested to 60 degrees C, 60 degrees Celsius. Saunas are tested to 90 degrees C. That's roughly 194 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. Right, right. Unfortunately, we have yet to find an LED module that will operate properly in a sauna. So we offer a number of LED fixtures for steam rooms. We start off with the LSW, which is a low voltage slot. It comes in a one foot, two foot, and four foot fixture. There are no screws on the lens frame. The screws are on the side, loosen them, <clears throat> and the door will hinge open. You can remove the LEDs. There is a quick disconnect. This allows you to install the fixture. You can either do the fixture as a surface mount or a semi-recessed. The frame, the lens frame itself is one solid piece. So there are no seams. There's no light leak. Fixture is rated IP65. It's suitable for steam rooms, not saunas, and is also suitable as an outdoor vandal resistant slot. We offer it in static white, comes in 2700K, 3000 or 3500. <clears throat> we offer it in tunable white, 2700K to 5000. And within the next couple of weeks, we'll be offering it in RGBW. This is a remote driver, yeah? Remote driver, class two, low okay. voltage, which means that you do not need a junction box. You do not need conduit. You can run the cables through the ceiling just like telephone wire. Right. You're going to remote the driver and put it into a suitable enclosure. Now, on any fixture on our website that uses a remote driver, we give you this downloadable maximum wiring chart, maximum distance wiring chart. On the left-hand side, we call out whether it's a constant current fixture operating in milliampere's 
or constant voltage operating in 12 or 24 volt DC. Across the top, we tell you the size of the wire. Connect the two if we've got a 40 watt, 24 volt DC fixture and 16 gauge wire, the driver can be 71 feet away. This takes all the guesswork out of voltage drop. Excellent. We just have to staple that to the outside of the box for the contractors, right? <laughs> doesn't matter. The contractor doesn't read it. <laughs> In addition to the LSW, which is a standalone fixture, we offer the same fixture in a continuous run version. Now we show this in a four foot fixture only. We can do it in other lengths if required. Same construction, but what makes it different is that the continuous run version has three different fixtures. There is an A fixture, which is always the beginning of the run. There is a B fixture, which is the middle of the run. And there is a C fixture, which is the end of the run. The difference is that the A fixture has a finishing die cast end on one side and has this die cast end with two holes on the other side. The B fixture has one end with two pins and one end with two holes. The C fixture has a finishing die cast end and the other side has two pins. So if I've got an eight foot continuous run, I'm gonna have one A four foot fixture and one C four foot fixture. If I have a 12 foot or longer, I'm gonna start off with an A, I'm gonna fill in with Bs in the middle, I'm gonna end with a C. <clears throat> when you install it, you install the A fixture first, you then align the pins into the holes and you install the next fixture. We can do this as a recessed fixture or surface fixture. I'm gonna say that's a louvered output as well. You can do either a-, a Louvered a output, each LED is in its own little square parabolic louver. Okay. We offer this in a, an 80 degree beam and a 50 degree beam. We will be introducing a little bit later this year, a wall wash version. But right now we're only offering 80 and 50. Very nice. If I take a look at the other fixtures in this section. The R is a round aperture with a die cast trim. The Q is a square with a square trim and the RX is round with a crisscross. These are all remote driver fixtures. The RSR is LED, the QSR is LED, the RXR are LED. These are suitable for steam rooms. The RHR is halogen, the QHR is halogen, and the RXH is halogen. These are suitable for either steam rooms or saunas. Excellent. So now, Richard, I'm going to ask you the question that, that designers ask me a lot. Yes. If I specify a halogen fixture and I use a Sora lamp or something like that, um, how does that work? Okay. Can that work? That will work. However, we chose not to offer it that way for the simple reason that the retrofit Sora lamp is the only lamp that we saw that would operate in sauna temperature environments. So if somewhere down the road, somebody replaces the Sora lamp with a lesser quality LED screw-in replacement lamp, the fixture is going to fail. I see. And then it's going to come back to be my fault or JP's fault. So Got it. we don't offer it, but if you choose to put a Sora lamp in and you know that only the Sora lamp is suitable, you'll be fine. I see. Okay, that's an interesting piece, though. That's an interesting piece of information for designers out there that you can use a sort. And when we say halogen and a sort of lamp, we're talking about MR16 or, or what lamp form factor? MR16. Okay, okay, that's great. We also offer versions of the R, the Q, and the RX in non-steam room versions. 
we offer one series with integral drivers, and then we offer one which is both a tunable white and RGBW. But the integral driver unit and the tunable unit are only IP65 wet label indoor or outdoor, but not steam room suitable. Got it. I'm going to leave you with one other thing, which is a sheet that I'm going to send to JP after the meeting. This is a sheet that illustrates all of the new products that we introduced fourth quarter of 2020. The photographs, the individual photographs are hyperlinks to the website. So we show you a new mud in recessed fixture. We show you some new floodlights, some new modular down lights. We show you some new interesting tiles. We show you some wall mount and some bollards. So I do so have, I have a question. to show you today. Richard, uh, just before we, we close out, there are two uh, questions coming in from our designers. Uh, mm -hmm. Martin with KGM is asking, uh, so if we have to use halogen in the sauna, but we want to use an LED version in the steam room next to it, will the look be consistent in terms of color temperature? So I guess in that, uh, in that scenario, we would want to recommend something like the Sora lamp. Is that right? Yeah, you want to, if you want to use the Sora lamp or you want to use the halogen and you're going to use other fixtures with it, the other fixtures should be 2700K. Got it. And we might want to look at those next to each other. And then the other question comes from Josh at Reveal. What wattage is the RHR rated for? If we wanted to use a seven watt Sora bulb, uh, could design plan and provide a sticker that says max wattage seven watts? We show that it's suitable for a 50 watt halogen lamp. Right. So obviously a seven watt Sora is going to be well below the 50 watts and you wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, I think what Josh is asking, though, is that if they wanted to sort of future proof it, could we provide a sticker that rated the fixture at seven watts or or some other warning? label? I, I would prefer not to, again, going back to the fact that if somebody replaces the solar lamp with a lesser quality lamp and it's going to fail. Right. I don't want to have something on there that said I approved it. Right. So what I would suggest is that if they're going to get the solar lamp from you, you might be able to do a label that you can supply with them. If you want, I'll send you a letter telling you that a seven watt solar lamp wattage wise is suitable. I see, okay. Yeah, I think what they're trying to do is limit wattage going forward for like Title 24 or something like that so that you're not uh, over energy limits. Well, the, but... the key is that with the solar lamp, they wanna make sure that it is rated for 120 degree C. Right. right. Yeah, I have to go in and look at which ones. I think the Vivid is, but I got. I have to look. Yeah. Got it. All right, Richard, thanks so much for going through this. I don't see any other questions popping up in the chat. Um, thank you, everybody, for jumping in and doing this with me. Richard, I'm going to just stop your screen share. Okay. I've got to put something up real quick. All right. Guys, thank you again for showing up and I really appreciate it. Everybody that showed up live today is a $10 donation to Feeding America. So thank you very much. Tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, we have Coronet with us to talk about updates to their Magneto system. So Magneto has been a very popular modular magnetic system, surface recessed or suspended. Uh, but there is a new um, recessed track head that can go in there that's on a little gimbal. Really interesting. And if you're not familiar with Magneto, it's one of my favorite systems to work with. So um, really looking forward to talking with Shaquille about Magneto tomorrow. And of course, if you're if this was helpful for you uh, and you're watching it on YouTube later as a recording, like, subscribe, share. Um, it's what's going to grow this, and I really want this to be a resource for the industry. And um, you know, every live person that steps up and and joins us for this is another donation to charity. So we uh, we really appreciate it, and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.